the Johnson Wax Program. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Company with Jim Jordan as Fibber, Donald Novice, the Four Notes, our special guests, Zazu Pitts, and Billy Mills Orchestra. Our 200th show opens with You Do Something to Me. the sun streams through the windows these early spring days, it reminds us that our floors and linoleum need extra attention. Fortunately, it's the easiest thing in the world to make floors sparkle and gleam like new with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. This remarkable liquid polish goes on in a jiffy, dries in 20 minutes to a grand polish, and requires no rubbing or buffing. Right now, while you're thinking about spring cleaning, you'll be glad to know that there's a special sale of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat in giant size cans, which gives you one-third more for your money. A pint and one-third, or a pound and one-third, for the price of only a pint or a pound. Now, the supply of these giant size cans is strictly limited, so it will pay you to buy both Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat while they're on sale at a bargain price. <laughs> Vista's mail carriers is vacationing this week, and who do you suppose is taking his place? Yes. And here, coming down the street, bent double by the weight of a big leather bag, we find not Santa Claus, not the junk dealer, not the Sandman, but Fibber, have you written to your mother, McGee? Boy, is this bag heavy. What this country needs is more illiterate people. Good morning, mailman. Have you a letter for me? What's your name, sis? You'll find it on the letter. Oh. Yeah, there was one, but I left it several doors down the street. What number? You'll find it on the house. Thank you. <laughs> See now, number 726 Oak Street. <whistles> mailman. Oh, uh, good morning. I'm sorry, bud. There's nothing for you folks today. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Postcard from Palm Springs to Mr. Joe Frizzle. Says, have lovely room at hotel here, next door to cute honeymoon couple. Having fine time, wish you could hear. <laughs> oh, yes. Here's a letter for Angus McTavish at 923. <whistles> Mr. McTavish? There's a letter for you. Thank you, laddie. Hey, hold on. There's one cent postage due on that. What? Only one cent? Glory be, my brother Jock got his raise. Thank you, laddie. <laughs> Good for brother Jock. Two more raises and he can send one special delivery. Oh, hello, Billy. Hello, Fibber. Say, is this really your 200th show for Johnson's Wax? Yes, it is, Billy. And when you stop to think of it, 200 broadcasts means an awful lot of jokes. That's what somebody said to me this morning. What'd they say, William? He said, my, that's a lot of awful jokes, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that ain't what I... What's Don Novus going to sing, Bill? Heaven can wait. Incidentally, how do you like carrying mail? Well, it ain't heaven on the feet, if you know what I mean. <laughs> my right foot is almost numb, and my left foot... Oh, Dad dread it, there goes my other arch. <laughs> you have Don sing, Billy, while I take this mail bag off and rest myself. Oh, wait a minute. There's a postcard for you from Austria. Must be from my old music teacher in Vienna. No, I read it, and it's from a guy named Wolfgang Mozart. He wants you to play his number, The Magic Flute. Mozart? Why, he died in 1791. Hmm. Well, I suspected as much. I found this card in the dead letter office. <laughs> now, go ahead, Billy. Boys, tune up your harps for Heaven Can Wait. Take it, Donald. Heaven can wait. This is paradise just being here with you.
Till I go there with you Heaven can do Heaven Can Wait, sung by Donald Novus, one of our angels with dirty faces. <laughs> Don, please accept my heartfelt thanks for that beautiful number. I get paid too, don't I? Oh, yes. <laughs> but if heaven can wait, who are you? <laughs> and another thing, that wasn't a very nice thing to say about me, having a dirty face. My face isn't dirty. Hmm. Well, let's see your neck and ears. Folks, I was wrong. <laughs> he ain't an angel with a dirty face. He's a nice, clean little devil. <laughs> What you got there, Don? Oh, I almost forgot. It's a telegram for you. Oh, well, let's see who it's from. Okay, bud. Oh, well, listen to this, fellas. It's from Jack Benny. It says, Dear Fibber, stop. Understand this is your 200th broadcast for Johnson's Wax. Stop. <laughs> I wonder why he didn't finish it. He did. Oh, oh, trying to get my goat, huh? <laughs> Just for that, I'll send Fred Allen a fan letter. Well, I got to get going with this mail. So long, Don. So long, postcard papa. <laughs> Fine spirit around here for a big anniversary show. You'd think they'd be more complimentary to... Hey there, mailman. 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 Hey, letter carrier. <laughs> What's on your mind, bud? Are you delivering any eyes and... Any eyes and... Eyes and... Any eyes and... Any window envelopes? <laughs> Window envelopes? Why, sure, this bag is full of them. Why? Well, would you mind if I sneak a little look at a little look at, if I sneak a little at, if I looked at some of them? I'm sorry, bud. That's against the postal regulations. You can't read anybody else's mail. Well, uh, okay. Thanks just the same. Thanks just the same. Thanks just the same. The same. The same. Much obliged, anyway. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What's the idea of wanting to look at the window envelopes? Oh, I'm just a guy who likes... Just a fellow who likes... Who li I'm a peeping Tom. <laughs> peeping Tom. He's a jerking Joseph. <laughs> See, now, I better sort out the rest of the mail for this block. Here's a letter for Harpo Wilcox. Wonder where he lives. Oh, well, just to save time, folks, he lives right here. <laughs> Good morning, mailman. Oh, is that you, Fibber? Oh, quit acting, Wilcox. You made the opening announcement. You know darn well it's me. <laughs> all right, all right. I was just endeavoring to establish a certain dramatic verisimilitude. Well, if you... You what? <laughs> I was endeavoring to establish a certain dramatic verisimilitude. Harpo, it's guys like you that make censorship necessary. <laughs> you know how some people are. If they can't understand something, it can't be decent. Here, here's a letter for you. Thanks. Well, say, isn't this a nice letter? I don't know. I didn't read it. The paper was too thick, <laughs> even when I held it up to the sun. <laughs> listen, listen, it says, my dear nephew. It's for my aunt. You don't say. Well, who else would you call my dear nephew? My uncle would. Oh, yeah. Well, go on ahead. All right, all right. It says, my dear, <laughs> my dear nephew. My dear nephew. Congratulations on your 200th broadcast for Johnson's Wax. You've done a wonderful job. I listen every Tuesday night to Harlow, Wilcox, and Company, and enjoy it very much. I'll enjoy it more, however, when I get my radio repaired, so, so I won't be getting a smart aleck named McGrew or something at the same time you're on the air. <laughs> Keep up the good work, nephew. Smart aleck named McGrew, Harlow, Wilcox, and Company. Well, what else does she say, dear nephew, I'm afraid? Oh, not much more. She says, I took your advice and bought some of the Johnson products in the special giant size cans with the extra third free while there are still some left. Your uncle and I are so pleased with your work that we're remembering you in our will. Well. Which do you want, the red heifer or the buggy with the fringe on the top? <laughs> 
Your loving Aunt Teresa Titwillow, Box 47, Birdcage, Arkansas. Ah, good old Aunt Teresa. <laughs> well, what's she going to take, Harpo, the heifer or the buggy? Well, I don't know. It's a pretty sporty buggy. It's got red wheels. Yeah, but the heifer's got two horns. <laughs> well, I got to be going, Harpo. Okay, so long, pal. <laughs> my dear nephew. Poof. Ain't enough. I got to have pains in my arches. I got to have ants in my mailbag. <laughs> well, let's see now. Who's next? Oh! Let... How do you do, Mr. McGee? Oh, so nice to see you. Oh, hi, Mrs. Uppington. Here's a letter for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGee. Tell me, don't you feel a beautiful surge of patriotism wearing the gray uniform of our brave mail carrier? <laughs> yeah, but I had a tough time with my Easter deliveries. At the end of the day, I had six more rabbits than I started out with. <laughs> they must have declared a dividend. <laughs> Say, I seen you leading them society people in the Easter parade, Uppy. Oh, yes, yes, and such fun, too, really. Oh, good, eh? And Horatio looked simply devastating in his cutaway coat and silk hat. Uh, I told him he looked just like a banker. <laughs> yes. yes, he did to me, too. Like a banker in a two-bit poker game. <laughs> you looked real handsome, all bundled up in that new fur coat, Uppy. Oh, Mr. McGee. In fact, the guy standing next to me says you look like a cute little rabbit. Oh, he didn't, not really. <laughs> well, them wasn't his exact words. What, what he actually says was, uh, who's the dumb bunny up in front? <laughs> no offense, of course. Oh, you got to be going, Uppy? Uh, yes, yes, I have to go, Miss McGee. You see, I'm attending a luncheon with the girls I used to know in finishing school. Oh, oh and I'm so afraid they're going to twit me about the time I pinned Francis X. Bushman's picture to my dressing table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess I was just a silly, brazen girl in those days. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye, Miss McGee. <laughs> I bet she played all American stem on the daisy chain, too. <laughs> oh, let's see now. Telegram for Fibber McGee. Telegram. Are you sign here, please? Oh, thanks, bud. I'd give you a tip, but I ain't got anything smaller than a dime. Well, you better save that so if it rains, you can crawl under it. Hmm. <laughs> Fresh kid. Wonder who this one's from. Well, from Bob Hope. Hope you have successful 200th broadcast for Johnson's Wax. Hope we continue to follow you on the same network... Same evening with our marvelous show starring Bob Hope and expensive guest stars. Stop. Hope you are reading this out loud. Stop. Hope. <laughs> what does he mean, expensive guest stars? I suppose he thinks Zazu Pitts just works here to pay off an old gambling debt or something. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, I got a letter for her. be somebody home. I seen the window curtain wiggle. Maybe she thinks I'm a peddler. Hey, inside there. You want any mail? Oh, I certainly do. Any mail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our old friend Zaza Pitts again. Hi, sis. Oh, hello, mister. Won't you come in and have a cup of tea and a piece of cake or just a cup of tea or won't you just come in? <laughs> no, thanks, sis. I just wanted to give you these three letters. Oh, dear me. Three letters. And from the Orange Blossom Matrimonial Bureau, too. Matrimonial Bureau? Well, why don't you open your letters and see if Cupid didn't dig a dart into some ding-dong daddy? Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, I will. But I don't believe it's any use. I just got a feeling I'm going to fall for some wolf in sheep's clothing with his smooth ways and slitty talk. And it's a wonderful feeling. <laughs> Excuse me while I read my mail, mister. What's that one say? He says the photograph I sent him looks just like Hedy Lamar. Oh, he did, eh? Gee, that, that's kind of flattering. <laughs> he certainly knows women. No, he doesn't. It was really a picture of Gail Patrick. <laughs> Somehow I don't seem to take a good glamorous picture, mister. I had some taken once with real soft focus, you know, behind a gauze screen and all. Uh -huh. And some man asked me for 12 dozen of them. 12 dozen? <laughs> he must have been running a temperature. No, he was running a shooting gallery. <laughs> he wanted them for targets. Uh, let's see this next letter. Oh, dear. What's that one? It's from a man who saw my advertisement. He says he thinks I'm just the girl for him if I have $10,000 in the bank and can handle a gang plow. <laughs> a gigolo in gum boots. Well, try the next one, sis. All right, but I just know it's no use. I've been throwing myself at men so long I feel like an Adagio dancer. Uh-oh. That guy enclosed a railroad ticket. Where's the ticket to, sis? Poison Gulch, Texas. It's from a cowboy. Oh. He says if I marry him, he'll give me a half interest in a Mexican saddle, 
a rattlesnake necklace, and a guitar. Mister, I'm engaged. Well, congratulations, sis. May all your little doggies get along. Oh, thank you, mister. Dear me, I'm so flustered. I, I hardly know what to do. I guess I better go up in the attic and see if I can find that old army cot. Army cot? Ain't that saddle bum got any bunks in his ranch house? Oh, I wasn't thinking of that. It was the trip out there. That railroad ticket he sent me is only good in the cattle car. Yippee! I'm a bride! <laughs> and I cried for you. And a nice, cheerful little earful it was, too, kids. Well, i got to deliver the rest of this mail if I ever expect it. Hmm. Talk about your dramatic verisimiliated. Here I am out in the street and the phone rings. Oh, well, I'll answer it anyway. Hello? I'd like to speak to Mr. McGee, please. Are you he? Yes, I is he, sis. What is it? Telegraph officer, I've been requested to sing a telegram to you. Oh, one of them singing telegrams. Okay, Flagstad, give out. Are you ready? Yes. I'm... Hey, wait a minute. Who's it from? Eddie Cantor Fan Club. Oh, okay, well, go ahead. Oh, here's to your 200 show, 200 weeks of banter. We thought before, but now we know that we want Cantor, we want Cantor. That is all, sir. So, they want Cantor, do they? Just a banjo-eyed tobacco auctioneer. <laughs> oh, here's a letter for old Boomer. And here's his boarding house. Hi, Boomer. Here's a letter for you. Thank you, my boy. Thank you. Wonder if it's important. Wait till I see what it is. Well, well, a round robin. <laughs> Thank you, my young friend. And how is it that a prominent citizen of your eminence finds himself in a mailman's uniform? Seems hardly fitting particularly around the prominence and the eminence. <laughs> Never mind my uniform, Boomer. Just tell Mrs. Uppington that I got a registered letter I forgot to give her. Just give it to me, stamp pad, and I'll take care of it. Certainly will. Take care of it like it was my very own. Why should I give her valuable mail to you? You'd have it steamed open in five minutes. Oh, is that so? Five minutes, eh? You hold an exalted view of the hot water situation in this boarding house, small fry. <laughs> Ah, but never hesitate to give me Madame Uppington's mail. I hold the dear girl's power of attorney, you know. I don't believe it. Let's see it. Oh, uh, why, certainly. Power of attorney. Power of attorney. Have it right here someplace. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, oh, here's a sack of gold nuggets given to me for safekeeping by an old prospector up in Alaska. A sweet roll from a sourdough. <laughs> yes, postcard from an old pal of mine. Says he's just taken up geology, studying rocks at Atlanta. Come on, Boomer, the power of attorney, if any. Oh, yes, yes, the power of attorney. Have it right here. Here's my bank statement for March. Looks like the census report for a midget village. All 
small figure. What's this? A newspaper clipping about a robbery in Memphis. Spelled my name wrong, too, Bradham. <laughs> ah, old pirate map. Oh, no, that's a picture of my father. <laughs> and a short beer. Well, well, imagine that. No power of attorney. <laughs> I could have told you that before you started looking. Well, I got to deliver this mail. So long, Boomer. Have to be going myself. Have to see a friend who was hurt in an accident. He was standing in front of a safe the other night, and it blew open. <laughs> That must have had a draft in it. Well, good day, Baghdad. That guy's so crooked, he's got corrugated iron in his blood. Well, one more letter to deliver to old-timers, and then I'm through. Here we are. Oh, sounds like the old duffer's throwing a wingding in there. Uh, well, I know. No, thanks, old-timer. Just brung you this letter. It's my last delivery. Hey! I says I brung you a letter. Here, it was sent on from your last address. It says on it, forward party has moved, and yours forward a party as I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> way I heard it, one fellow says to the other fellow... Hey, he says. <laughs> I see where Joe Lewis is fighting a guy named Rupert. That ain't the Secretary of Commerce, is it? Nope, says t'other feller. That's a different Roper. Well, says the first feller, don't make any difference in the result if it's the same Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> the difference between wrestling and prize fight promoters, Johnny, is one buys a pig and a poke, and the other one buys a poke and a pug. <laughs> Listen, old-timer, I'm getting tired of all this that-ain't-the-way-I-heard-it stuff. Shucks. No matter what the time or place, you always meet some smarty face who knows what score is made before the game is played. He knows the inside, inside out, and what the world is all about. There's always one around, and here's the way it's out. California has no reins. You can't tip porters on the trains. This program takes a lot of brains. That ain't the way I hear it. That old buddy, Denny. Burgers dearly love a cop. A kid just hates a lollipop. Hell's a poppin'. It's a flop. That's certainly not the way I hear it. <laughs> How did you hear it, Mrs. Uppington? Social leaders hate to be objects of publicity from all photographers weekly. But that ain't the way I hear it. <laughs> Sweet and low, Donald. Billy Mills, our maestro, wrote this little ditty, note for note. He thinks he'll get Cole Porter's goat. That's not the way I'm hearing it. Have the Greeks got a word for it, Nick? Sure. A wrestling man just hates to grunt. No Greek will run a restaurant. Cursing never saw the front. But that ain't the way I hear it. There's a catch in this one, folks. The world is full of <laughs> and such from folks who <laughs> and <laughs> too much. But never you drop a lie <laughs> touch. But that ain't the way I hear it. The way I hear it. I'm known, I guess, from coast to coast as one who'll never brag nor boast. Of modest guys, I am the most. But that ain't the way I hear it. You see, old-timer, for 200 weeks of this Johnson's Wax show, I've been standing for your That Ain't the Way I Heard It. But during our next 200 broadcasts... Your what, Johnny? Our next 200 shows for Johnson's Wax. <laughs> well, what's so funny? Oh, oh nothing. <laughs> but as I said before, Johnny, That Ain't the Way I Heard It.
back in just a moment. And now, we want to remind you again of the big sale on Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat in giant size cans. This sale comes just at house cleaning time when you need both wax and glow coat to give your home a clean and well-cared-for appearance. There are always a lot of extra household expenses in the spring, and we feel sure you'll appreciate this opportunity to save money on your purchases of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat. Be sure to ask your dealer tomorrow for the special giant size can, a pint and one-third, or a pound and one-third, for the regular price of only a pint or a pound. Now, when these giant cans are gone, there won't be any more. So, if it's not convenient for you to get to the store in the morning, why not telephone and order Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat in the money-saving giant size can. Folks, we want to thank Zazu Pitts for helping us celebrate our 200th Johnson broadcast. Our 201st show next week is something pretty special, too, because... Well, starting next Tuesday, it's Fibber McGee and Molly again. Good night, folks. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Global Racing, Wisconsin, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.